as we face climate change, we have people who are contributing effectively on developing long-term climate scenarios as well as short-term climate scenarios. So the way we are thinking is at a system level of design. One of the really important reasons we are interested in taking integrated photonics, nanoscale photonics, and placing them in computing and communication systems is energy. Energy is not something that's scalable. Most of the energy in these systems is actually spent on moving data, if it's electronic. However, if it's optical, we can move the data without increasing the power that's getting consumed. And it's a much, much more energy efficient technology for moving the data. And so the ability to now combine all of this optical devices at the nanoscale inside computing is enabling us to create systems that are not only better performing and process much more information, but are also consuming much less power. I'm the director of the Lenfest Center for Sustainable Energy. One of the big area we are working on is the carbon management and carbon sequestration. How to lower the carbon footprint. If you look at the fundamental side of my research, it's all about carbon dioxide, CO2 interaction with natural materials and engineered materials. So if you look at traditional uh, environmental engineering, you're kind of looking at the end of the pipe, right? Because if you're emitting something, you just want to cap on it or do something at the end. So instead of looking at just the existing technology, can we redesign the entire system so that there's a zero emission? Why not? So it's not only looking at the last step, we're looking at every step of the way to redesign the modern uh, engineering systems by developing different catalysts and reactor systems so that we do that conversion of a gaseous CO2 carbon dioxide with the minimum energy input and minimum environmental output. Just looking at environmental factors don't completely tell the full story because those factors have to get put into an industrial setup or an economic setup and that's where OR researchers come in to try to understand how we can further sustainability goals. If a mining industry needs to operate, it needs to figure out how the output is going to be there. But at the same time, can we ensure that the technology is used in such a way that its environmental impact is as low as possible, or at least include that impact in the overall decision making. This is an optimization system for hurricane hazard. Since this can actually simulate the Hurricane Sandy and then we added future sea level rise, you could see the area of flooding is expanding. So we're going to decide what protective strategy is going to be applied. We choose seawall, wall height, location, when to construct, and the price of construction. All of this is going to be parameterized and then put in the system. And then I'm going to simulate the flooding. Using the strategy, we figure out where it's going to be flooded and how high it's going to be flooded. And then also view a ground because there's a subway. And then based on that, quantify every kind of economic damage, physical damage, income, and inventory loss. Based on the damage, we check suitability of protective strategies. If the cost of building this is more expensive than the damage cost, then we have to go back to step one and then do the same thing. What we are doing is looking across scales, recognizing that it's not just a technology deployed in a box and hence we are trying to achieve long-term positive outcomes from an environmental perspective in total.